Welcome to the Town of Deerfield Select Board Board of Health Sewer Commissioners meeting of January 10th, 2024 at six o'clock here in the main meeting room in South Deerfield, Massachusetts. This meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation. Please note that while an option for remote attendance and or participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting and hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. The meeting will be held in person in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Offices. In accordance with Mass General Laws, Chapter 30A, anyone intending to record this meeting must identify themselves to our clerk, Trevor McDaniel, and provide their name and address for the record. Thank you. Um, your dial-in number is 32, uh, 312-626-6799 or 929-205-6099. Meeting ID is 911-604-1580 and the passcode is 570012. Thank you. So we've called the meeting to order. Public comment. Is there any public comment? Okay. Hi, Annalie, I see you. Um, all right. So we have uh, uh, we have a scheduled we have a scheduled um, uh, food vendors um, appearance at six fifteen. So we have a few minutes. So let's go on to minutes. Do we have any minutes? I don't see any minutes. No. Let's go to the police department HVAC bid um, authorization. Um, does anyone have any questions on that? No, it looks, you know, uh, looked it over. It looks, um, luckily it came in less than we were hoping for, which is excellent. Uh, it looks like the bidder is uh, Pittsfield Pipers, Inc. Um, the total bid. Uh, 173,200. Yeah. 173,200. Which is better than we were hoping for. Um, and I know that she did some, um, it's a concept. It's Everybody did some follow up in uh, on the uh, uh, we've worked with them before. The, the yes. engineers worked with them before. Yeah, and then. I think we're in pretty good shape. Um, insurance, uh, you know, the certificate of contractor eligibility is here. Uh, so all the rec the required oh, documents are yeah. there. They are DCAM yeah. certified. Sorry, yep. they were in the bottom. That's all. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I, I would make a motion to approve uh, the contract for the. Uh, Police Station HVAC work uh, to Pittsfield Pipe Pipers Inc. for $173,200 lump sum. Do I have a second? Second. I, and I'll authorize the chair to sign. I'll authorize the chair to sign. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll second that part too. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor Carolyn, Daniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. Let me get this over to Casey. This is done. Trevor, that was for the notice of award, not the contract. Oh, um, notice of award. Okay, the notice right. of award. Yeah. Thank you. Notice of award. I'm sorry. Yep. Um, I didn't catch that, but if we did sign the notice of award. Okay. Um, next item on the agenda is open the annual town meeting warrant for April 29th, 2024. I move to declare the warrant for annual town meeting open, currently scheduled for April 29th, 2024 at 7 p.m. in Frontier Regional School Auditorium with intent to close said warrant on February 21st, 2024. Um, do I Second. Have, is there any discussion? No. Hearing none, all those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn, that's aye. It's okay. Um, DPC's uh, Deerfield Sewer Stormwater Asset Management Project Grant. Do you just want to discuss that a bit, Trevor? Yeah. Yes, uh, earlier this year, we applied, uh, well, DPC on our behalf applied for um, two asset management grants um, through DEP, and uh, we secured both of them. One grant uh, back in 2000, and 
I can't remember, 17 or so, we 15 to 17, we did a asset management plan for our uh, wastewater treatment system, which uh, covered uh, documenting and camera work and um, building a, a big binder about this big, documenting all of our sewer infrastructure. And it's been over five years. It's time to redo that again and see what the conditions of, of that is. And this time we have a grant. Um, so there is some in-kind uh, work from staff and then there's cast match as well. I just wanted to kind of talk about it tonight um, and then, um, you know, just have some a quick discussion, say we got the grant and then maybe have time to read it over, look at it, talk to Brenda, talk about finances, talk to staff, make sure that we're 100% on board with this to move forward. There are two grants. One is for our wastewater uh, treatment infrastructure like we did before. The second one is really important and that is um, all the stormwater um, infrastructure. So we have wastewater for all sewage, then we have all the other culverts, everything that we've been working on replacing. Would you, would you mind if we tabled that for now? I would love meeting? that. Yeah, oh, okay. just so that you could take a look at it, read it, talk to staff, make sure we're good, talk to accountant. Um, well, I, I would, I'd really appreciate it if you could do that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. But um, I, I, I think it's really important, I, and I know Tim would be interested too, is, is reading that stormwater part because yeah. it's brand new. It is new to us. So. And, um, I, I, I stormwater is like one of the biggest problems we have. Right. So no, I think it, it's okay. worth taking time going through it. But it was great news that we we got both grants. Um, is there a grant. deadline when to sign it? Uh, I think I mean, we've got a little bit of time. I don't. I'll have to look at that deadline. But I know we just got notified. I think last week that we received them. So I think we have a little bit. It's certainly enough for another meeting to go through it at all. Um, find out what our what our exposure is on all of that. Uh, they were both $150,000 grants, so that was really nice. Um, I mean, I'm really excited about it, but it, yeah. I don't think, it doesn't look like there's any deadline date. I, I, can see. I think we've got a little bit of time. I don't see a date on it right now as to when. Casey or Chris, is there a date on this, do you know, that we have to respond by? I think again. I think we've got some time. I don't recall the actual. I don't, I don't date. see a date here. I didn't see a date on um, any of that. Was there anything in an email, Trevor? I will. I forwarded on the email, but I don't recall that there was an actual. I mean, yeah. I'm sure there's a date, but I don't think it needs to. I mean, it's like it's probably like a year or two. Uh, just my date reviewed two seven maybe. Oh, then if we you have review plenty the of time. scope of work for this, yeah, two, yeah. So we have time. I think that says two seven. Oh, oh. no, that's two seven twenty three. That was a review of the other stuff. Sorry, we'll just keep looking well, here. Well, listen. How about if we put it on the agenda, Chris? Yeah, can next you put week. it on the agenda. Make a note to put it on the agenda to vote on on the twenty fourth. And if there's any issues, we can certainly vote on it sooner. Okay. Yep. I just truthfully haven't had a chance to read. No, it's just it looks like we have to have it signed before February 1st. Okay. So oh, we definitely we have, have the money. I think. Have time. I have just time. a quick read of the first one. Yeah, thank you. Because it's got a schedule of your report date, Correct. your design plan start Kick date, off. which is July 1st. Yep. Um, the end date is December 30th of 2025 so Thank it's you. a year and a half grant that's so right. i think right. we've got a little bit of time that's just yeah. my first read perfect thank you thank you so but it doesn't pop out at you in the grant paperwork yeah no that would be great meeting. thank you yeah i just just table it until next meeting so perfect. we can i i, I want to read the storm one mm -hmm. really well Sounds okay good. thank you all right so we want to table it for the next meeting yes yes uh, to vote on by next meeting it's it's wonderful we got 250 Two one hundred and fifty thousand dollar grants. That's great, but mm -hmm. we need to verify our match. We need to verify staff in kind. Make sure and, you have the money. Yep. yep. And um, we need to. Uh, I just want to check the stormwater calculation. Sure. Okay. Perfect. All right. Thank you. Um, okay. Well, we got a couple more minutes. That's great. I see. Sorry to interrupt. I see Kevin has joined. I know he had a couple of items. I don't know if you wanted to get to those before we start the food permitting discussion. Oh, okay. Kevin, thank you for showing up. Uh, what do we have? What, Kevin, uh, what what did you want to talk about? What road update did you want to talk about? Or the brick grant? 
excuse me, sorry. Um, actually, I was going to give you um, a quick update. Realistically, most of the roads are pretty much the same. I uh, haven't been able to move in on uh, River Road yet because of weather. Yep. And uh, Hoosick is open. Most people already know that. Um, guard mill is in. Looks really nice. Um, survived the storm that we got. Um, obviously, we've got more storms up and coming. Drains are open. We're doing the best we can with what we got. Um, we, did we do okay last night? I know we had a ton of rain. No, no I think we we did very well last night. Yeah, that's great. So we have an old Deerfield. Old Deerfield is. Yeah, all that work really it, is working well. It is. It's, it's paid off big time because otherwise we would definitely have problems up there by now already. Yep. Well, they'd be the, flooding, the, the corner of the holding yards, cars would be stuck in the water. And... Yeah. yeah. I know that uh, one of the plowers uh, said that Hoosick Road was better than it's ever been. That's great. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Actually, I listened to them through the radio. Um, they were making the comment saying, wow, this scrapes up really nice, this new pavement compared to what it was. Good. Uh, nice. Yeah. No, it was it, it, it was pretty ugly. Um a couple of things that I had um, was uh, the sewer abatement um, for Town yes. Hall. Um, yep. I'm not sure if you can move on that or if you want to wait until sure. after. I could, um, I could hit on that pretty quick, Kevin. I did the calculations um, based on the information you gave me. Um, we had a 93,666 usage. Um, however, I think 50, um, 50, 50, 58,383 was the ball field, which is what we, which we abate. So uh, I took that off the total. I came out with a town hall usage of 35,233 times a thousand gives me 35.233 uh, times uh, 20.94 per thousand gallons uh, gives me seven, $737 and um, 78 cents plus the $100 um, service connection fee. So that gives us a, a bill of $837.78. The rebate uh, would be $1,222.54. So I filled out the application, um, and you you did as well. Uh, you did, and then I just put it on our form, and then um, so we're we're good to go. If you have any I'll, questions, I'll, let's I'll make a motion to uh, approve an abatement of $1,222.59. I'll second that. I'll second it, but I I yep. just want to make sure. sure I know where this is. This yep. is okay. So this, this is, is for our, <laughs> it's our town hall. Yep, and yep. we have a we have a, a a meter for the ball field in in the electrical closet back there, and um, Kevin takes a photo of it every fall, same time, so we know how much is used each year or each billing cycle, and right. then we could we can yep. abate that. And we abate it from ourselves. I, I yes. mean, just I yep. understand. We get all the, all the we pay pay the school, right? all the, we yeah. never used to pay, but now all town buildings and schools pay sewer. So sure. And just like we do for Frontier, we abate their water yep. on the field. So Excellent. we do the same for us. If there's no further discussion. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Excellent. Thank you. Chris, can you see that that gets over to uh, um, Sarah, please? That way we can we'll get do. That, out. that way I can pay it this warrant so I don't get myself into trouble with yes. Um the only other thing, and it looks like you only got a minute, I'm probably gonna run out of time here, is those two questions I have on the this uh still water road trees, those big pine trees. Um again, it's within the layout, but it's nothing that we went ahead and planted. Um I forwarded the information um again to be able to show the photos of what it is. Those three trees are approximately about a $93, $9,800 um, removal. So long story short, call it 10 grand to take those three trees down. Um, yep. Again, within our layout, but nothing the town planted. And I, and so, I think just the budget constraints we're in at the moment, we should probably hold on that until we- Oh yeah. See oh, well, we well first on our part, that that's one third of my budget. Right, exactly. For the entire trees. year for the for for trees. So yeah, just so you're aware. So so that's something you know you need to make a decision on at some point in time because mm -hmm. I've got a resident that's questioning it. And then I've got another issue that actually came up today, uh North Main Street around 142. Uh they're very concerned about a pine tree that is approximately 104 feet off of the town layout. Um 
it's not on our layout it's no no it's 104 feet away from our layout um unfortunately you know i i i feel where the residents have issues with the flooding that we're having um but i personally can't see how this can turn into the town of Deerfield's responsibility, the highway department or whatever. I, 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 I don't know what to do. And that's pretty much what I'm getting right now from the right around, you know, I stopped and I spoke with some people over on uh, Kelleher, you know, and there's something that does need to be done there. You know, you got the pipes could be replaced. Somebody's asking, you know, what can I do to keep the water from coming in? You know, my garage is flooded. You know, I've got three sump pumps running, you know, and he's all freaked out. The people across the street, they're getting ready to move. Um, it's, it's just kind of ugly all the way around. So what I'm trying to get at is, is, is I think the board needs to come up with some type of a, a thought process, a policy, a procedure, however you want to deal with this. Um, again, this is nothing you're going to do right away, but it's something that needs to be addressed because the people need to have some type of an answer instead of me going, I'm sorry, but that's way outside. And if that tree falls and you flood more, I'm sorry, that's, that's yeah. up to you. To, to remove the tree mm -hmm. um but you know then because it's right there at the stream i don't know con con gets involved but i was like you know what my hands are clear at that point you know that that's up to the landowner what to number, do where what number was that i was like it's like one like 142 north main street it's how, uh how did that come to our attempt like why would we if it's off of our property it's not our property it's personal property i assume so correct yep. why why are we because i received the phone call Oh, okay. Oh, so okay. I'm I'm res I'm responding to a call. Okay. Um, she did send some photos. Um, you know, and, and again, I understand where they're coming from. You know, we've got a ton of water, and we got a ton more water coming. Um, what does that exactly have to do with the tree? Is it is the tree? Really what they're concerned about the, the the concern of the call because she actually called town hall also and spoke with Pat was was she is concerned about the tree falling and blocking more of the brook that's already overflowing and causing more right flood. that that's a personal Does the tree a, look exactly like and, but human? i'm i'm i i told them i would bring it to your attention okay, so this way you. you're yeah. aware of where we're coming from where they're coming from um yeah. and again you know the same thing with the people on kelleher right. you know the the drainage that's in there <clears> is is horrendous and that needs a lot of work too but again, you know, that goes on a lot of personal property. And I've always advocated not going into personal property because of right. all the abilities right. of coming. Yep. Um, so that's those are my those are my two, my three things um that I really got. Um again, you know, if you've got any questions for me at this point. No. No. No, no thanks for all your work during the thanks. storm, all your crew. I know it's that was not an easy storm at all. And yeah, uh, no, they actually went back out again slushing at one o'clock, one thirty this morning to make sure that we didn't have any issues come morning. So thank you. Thank yeah. you, Kevin. So they they had a they had a pretty long day, you know, because they put a full day in also. So yeah. you know, definitely kudos to the crew, and especially being shorthanded as we are. It was um, nice to see it warm this morning and not like fresh flash freeze. Yeah, yeah, that was one of our paranoias, you know, because you know they come out and they tell us this is what it's going to do, but you know they're if they're right more than twenty percent of the time, you know, yeah. they still do their job. That's uh, right. You know, if I did that, boy, I'd be long gone. So <laughs> long story short, is I I trust no one, and and I, we have to plan for the worst. Yep. And, all right. Thank now you. We're done. So other than right. that, thank you very much. Yep. You appreciate right. it. Good night. See you soon. Bye, Kevin. Have a good night. Thanks. Um uh good evening. We have um discussion on the food vendor permitting. So Valerie as our health agent, why don't you come up and uh, you all please bring your chairs up to the speaker and we'll all introduce yourselves and we'll talk about your situation. Valerie. Hey, you want to sit up here? Give people more room. Yeah, give some some room to them. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's a good idea. No, either way. Yeah. yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Perfect. Valerie. All right. Yeah. It it might save my book. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Um, introduce yourselves and speak right into the mic. Yeah. Otherwise, you'll be doing what it's I just really did. Hard, it's really hard for people to see on the. I'm John Grossman. I'm the owner of the Holyo Comas Company. Uh, mm -hmm. Our uh, base of operations is at the Myco Terra Farm on uh, Stillwater Road. Oh, nice. And uh, and we serve a lot in Deerfield and uh, the uh, the types of permits that you uh, allow and administer here are 
uh, different than uh, than any other town. But yep. I guess we're just doing introductions now. So. Sure. Hello, uh, my name is Supisha Hillenbrand, the owner of the Kai Shili truck. And I was here last year, I believe, for the meeting. And I am back again to, you know, I want to convince you guys to at least, you know, um, understood about um, the small business like food truck mm -hmm. that who want to coming in to the town and do some business here with the tree house. And, you know, um, if the application process and the fee is a little bit more friendly to a small business, you know, and easier for us to be able to to apply, you know, just one time, like any other town in the area that they do, that highly appreciated, you know, mm -hmm. because I have, you know, every year I do the permit, apply, apply the permit, probably more than 12 towns every year. And again, I said it last meeting that every town and regulation is different. Yes. But, you know, it's the difference between the annual rate that you charge and also on top of that, the temporary temporary rate that you charge. Mm -hmm. You can't combine the both of them at the same time for the fee because that's what everybody you know, like when you go to one town and you be a frequent vendor, mm -hmm. you asking for the annual permit. But if you go into one town just for one time deal for catering or any event whatsoever, wedding, graduation, anything, and you apply for the temporary that you pay just one time deal, mm -hmm. $35, which is very understandable. Every town does that between $35 to $50 per temporary. Mm -hmm. But once you add annual fee plus the $35 each time that you want to show up and allowing for consecutive four days. But imagine if anything like, let's say, Treehouse have Holyoke Hummus being the uh, vendor on that day, but his trailer happened to have an emergency and cannot show up. And Treehouse contact me. I cannot just show up there because I don't have the permit apply right. yet. Yep. So that is very inconvenient for the vendor. Yep. So, and especially Treehouse, since you see these 2023, they bring a lot of event, concert, marathon, bicycle, and things like that. So they create a lot of revenue into your town. And the pizza that they serve is not enough for the consumer. Right. So that's why they're counting on all of us. But for us, in order to do the application and, you know, like us, for us, it's only two people working. Yep. Without me dealing with all the paperwork, we both always working. Sometimes we work 10 days straight. We don't have time to catching up with the paperwork during the busy season. Yeah. So we thinking that, you know, the annual flat rate would be appreciated, you know, would be more easier well, for all of us. Well, well, what we've come up with, um, we've been meeting on this. So Valerie has come up with a suggestion and Chris has uh, uh, worked out an agreement that hopefully we will vote on tonight and work with Treehouse on is we, first off, I appreciate the fact that you have brought to our attention um, the cost of the, um, Permit because we were not covering our costs. It actually was subsidizing the whole thing. So we are going to vote tonight to raise the fee to fifty dollars. Um, but what we've come out with um, is a suggestion that Valerie will do. Um, well, why don't you explain it, Valerie? How you would go through the inspection process and then take the duplicate copy and then be able to account at the end of the month and build treehouse. So that inspection form, Valerie, I, Valerie, you gotta go talk into the thing. That inspection form that I give you is a duplicate copy. So I will still go out and inspect, but it won't be a cost to you. We we are gonna build treehouse at the end of the month, and I believe they've agreed to do that. So the treehouse will cover the cost. treehouse will cover you while you're not there. the annual permit, but the 
per day. But the per day permit. Oh, so I'll still go out to, to see you and still go out and do your inspection. And we'll still give you that inspection form. And then I'll take that copy, the what the top copy that I have, and I'll give it to Patricia and she will uh, invoice Treehouse a okay. number of times at that, the end of the month. Even yeah. I, I think so it, that's not a cost to you. It will be it's the tree house because they're tree actually the right. ones that are benefiting. See, I think, I think but, we want to explain a little bit about this. There's a couple of things, and we understand your point as well. We also have other people who own businesses in town as well and pay real estate tax and have employees that you know have permanent places uh -huh. in town. So you're trying for, for boards of health and, and trying to look at economic development, you're trying to create a happy medium between people who come in and do, you know, food trucks and then other people who actually, pay, you know, have permanent buildings, pay rent. And then we also pay have the meal, meals, tax. meals tax, all this other uh, income to the town. There's, there's a difference in business models, right? So, um, but we still have to inspect each one of them and we pay um, our employees well to, to do that work and to make sure that we're inspecting all the time. We, and we also recognize that, that you know, an entity like Treehouse or any other entity like that um, is it hasn't invested in the kitchens and all of the stuff to be able to supply their patrons with with food. And, and so then relying on 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 your vendors to come in and do that, we still need to ex, um, we still need to inspect all of that. But but it. Um, we, I don't think it's quite fair to lay all of that cost on on food truck vendors versus, you know, and maybe cutting that. I think what we're trying to do is find that happy medium between the institutions that are building this and in serving their clients and you that are have a fixed fees and are coming in and doing that and also thinking about our restaurants and businesses that that also provide services to the community as well. So we're trying to find that happy medium to recognize the expense that you have, the expense that residents, you know, uh, business owners have in town with physical places, and and the benefit that Treehouse is getting by not obviously we haven't yet invested in all that kitchen staff and all of that and relying on you to provide that service. So it, you know, we feel like they, I think, and they've agreed to share in that cost. So that's what we're trying to find that yeah. happy medium. Uh, I. Uh... A couple of points here. Um, I mean, first of all, the the the, the conversation about uh, you know trying to uh, restrict food trucks because uh, there are brick and mortar businesses. It's not a restriction. It, not talking about restricting food trucks. You're trying to um, make it very expensive. No, for, no, we're trying to keep the same cost between the two. So uh, an annual uh, uh, restaurant license mm -hmm. permit is two hundred dollars. Uh, right and yes. and meals tax and meals tax okay right we're not um, getting meals tax from a food truck okay um uh, isn't isn't that a um, uh, uh, something for um, you know uh, economic development or some other department to 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 be using food truck permitting which is really a a question of of the health. Uh, and, and safety of the general public, not not a restraint of trade. No, it doesn't. It seem it seem like that belongs in a in a different department. So so to 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 create the system, also, uh, you know, the the if you're if the board of health is is concentrating on keeping people healthy, right, uh, by the same um, uh, you know method, w wouldn't you be inspecting a restaurant every single day that it opens? Well, not, like why is a food truck inspected be, every be, time that it starts? It's a lot more difficult to keep food safe. If you have a permanent freezer, you've got portable water, you've got all of that stuff in a building that you're paying rent on or where you own, it's a lot different than a food truck when it's 90 degrees out or cold out or whatever it might be. It's a lot harder to keep food. I mean, you can weigh in on this. It's a lot harder to keep food Born illnesses um, under control in a food truck environment than in a permanent brick and mortar building. You do a great job. We're not saying that. And it's not about economic development, although we we share multiple hats here, Board of Health, Select Board. We always look about the finances of the town. Are we covering our costs for our, um, for health, our inspector. health inspector to go out 
and inspect and make sure people are safe. That's that's the bottom line. We don't look to make money on any. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not talking about the fees. I'm not even talking about the fees. I, I just I just think that well, that, the, the that, chance that, of that, a foodborne illness in a food truck is much higher than a regular restaurant. And we are responsible for investigating foodborne illness. Mm -hmm. And it is, people can hardly remember what they ate the day before, forget two or three weeks. And in an environment like in, in Treehouse, they're all over, from all over. And trying to conduct a foodborne illness in, investigation in that kind of environment is, we don't have the capacity. So what we're doing is preventative. And we have always done in this food inspection on all our food trucks in town every time they come into town that's but we give you four days once we've inspected you you have four consecutive days um and we give you know temporary if like at atlas there's one that is there for almost a month or six weeks you know it we don't inspect every day but every time you come and set up in town we do inspect is uh is is Deerfield uh, safer uh, for Absolutely. that than than, than any other town? Do you do you have have you like compared uh, health yes. outcomes? Yes, uh, health outcomes. So like Northampton, like the, it's there's we don't we do not do we have not had a food board illness investigation for seven years. That was the last time we had one. And so now, Valerie, I just want to understand that we're talking about. Um, an annual fee, and then if the vendor works at Treehouse, Treehouse is going to cover the cost of the inspection. So the, but any anywhere in, in Deerfield, not not just mm -hmm. Treehouse. That, no, that, no, just no, Treehouse, Treehouse is not going to pay you. No, no, to work but, for somebody but, else. But if I want to serve somewhere else in Deerfield, it's I, have to, I have to pay another fifty dollars. So, Why so at my that? at my base of operations. Um, uh, if, if I wanted to, uh, open up my doors and serve people who were, uh, who are at the farm store, uh, at Mike Otero, who, who does pay taxes and, and I pay rent here in, in town. So, so my money does flow, in fact, flow through, uh, to the town. Uh, I would have to be paying $50 a day, uh, to, to $50 serve for the, for, for, four, for days. four days. Yeah. Or you can get a temporary permit like Atlas does. Can you explain what? Atlas has done. Atlas paid for their the Atlas Farm food truck. It's La Cocina Lupita. Mm -hmm. um, he paid the annual fee, plus he paid the $35, and he stayed there until September. We gave him another permit and charged him another $35. So he was inspected. Actually, he was inspected four times during this summer and into the end of October. Uh, I'm confused. But, but, that, but he, he, he was, he didn't move his food truck out of that area. It, his food truck was there per, semi permanently. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, he was like a seasonal, I would say a seasonal restaurant. So, uh, but we're still talking about the, the uh, infrastructure of a food truck and not a restaurant. Isn't that just as difficult to keep safe, whether it's driving somewhere else or not? I myself went there four times. Dick Kalashevsky went there a few times, and you went there at least four times, four times. Officially, officially, yes. So he was inspected on a regular basis, but he did not have to pay. It was this, We had treated it as a seasonal because he didn't decamp and go somewhere else. He stayed there for the entire time. But, so, but, if but again, how, city, how does that how does that uh, how does that infrastructure any safer because he didn't go anywhere? Uh, than, than a food product because we were observing else. that he was uh, doing everything correctly and the food you know Valerie's inspections were there wasn't anything that she had problems with so you're I'm, I'm just curious I don't really know a lot about how the the food truck industry works per se I mean I know that you're mobile food vendors so do you ever stay in one place for a month do you ever? No, we don't. We're right. moving around. But again, we all have to do the serve safe um, test. We have to get the allergen test and everything like that. So we all have to be trained. And oh, yeah. we are very, we are experienced, like professional in the, in this, you know, food industry. Just like so, our restaurants. Yeah. yeah. So 
yeah, we, we come from the commissary kitchen and everything like that as a backup. We not just cook from home. And, and that's why we're willing to accommodate. And, and my thing team. is, you're going to change from temporary price from $35 to a $50. Which that, that is covers like, our expenses as a town. I, I understand because you're going to charge in three, uh, three house for that part. But if it happened, like I'm going to the Eagle Brook on go to a Deerfield Academy. So that $50 per each time, I, I just think, if this, if you this know, works if, out, if this works out, um, we will try to work with other vendors in town. I mean, other institutions in town that like um, Berkshire Brew, um, I think Deerfield Academy and Eagle Brook were the next, um, you know, highest amount of permits. But yes, we have to have $50 to cover expenses right now as a town. And that that's just the way it is. What about if, let's say, we going out to Treehouse, one, like in in the same month? What about have Valley inspect us once a month or something that we dare? Because I, I I don't think it's like, you know, you're going you out know every time. We're, if you know that we're coming every time, that Valerie's going to be there every time, then you know yourself you're going to have a different standard, maybe or maybe not. But yeah, you, that's, a, that's, a, that's a very well inappropriate assumption. If you know we're coming every time to do an inspection, then things will be in order. And that's and that's what no, we my, want. Things are in order because I'm I'm, I'm I want to be compliant and safe and we serve that. We uh, trust that. Then that's but we're still going to do an inspection. It, it, it's it, it's it's so. Um, I mean, I'm, again, comparing it comparing it to how often you inspect restaurants, it just it just it just seems ludicrous that 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 a food truck needs to be inspected every single time it, it opens. Every time you set up, mm -hmm. you need to make sure that you've set up in the proper manner. And Val then, Valerie, that, I just have a question for Valerie. For um, everybody across the board. As far as restaurants in town go, can you make a spot inspection whenever you want to? I do. You right. Did today. So she just did today, doesn't mean that she's not going to do more than one inspection a year. You no, know, we do two already. Anyway, right, right. But she could do a spot inspection. So yeah. Or more. Right. Um I, you know, I understand it. You're obviously it seems you're very interested in working at Treehouse. Because is that a good place to work? I, I, I yes. want to I want to work in Deerfield. Right. Period. Right? right. So so I do I do a lot of business at, at in at Treehouse, uh, but I uh, I was also planning on on serving at, uh, at at my base of operations at my guitar farm, who has a farm store and and, and traffic and business. Um, but uh, you know, fifty bucks for you even every four days. I mean, it doesn't even like cover a week or well years years. does seem to be a unique situation and I, I you know i'm not speaking for anyone can else work something out like we did for atlas farm that's not you don't need to pay for every time you set every four days if you're going to do something from your business in deerfield but if you're going to another place as a food truck we are inspecting you and and treehouse is willing to work work on this with us, and if it works out, we'll maybe think of some of the other vendors because the schools, uh, Deerfield Academy especially, is using a different model now. They rather than keep their kitchens open, they're using food trucks. But and and Valerie has to go up there at seven o'clock at night in the middle of the winter, and on Fridays and Saturdays, it's it's awful. But she's still going to inspect who is ever there at seven o'clock on you know the weekends and how much is the annual fee going to be now we we were thinking of 150 um is that correct valerie that's yeah. correct and plus 50 dollars temporary for anywhere else yes not treehouse right can you do something like seasonal just chart the flat rate we're going to inspect every time, and we you can still inspect us, but can it just be a flat rate of something we that have, we pay? Part of the reason we have to do this is because we have to cover our uh, the expense of the inspection. I, I I don't I don't believe that 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 frequency of inspection is is warranted or or makes people healthier or safer. And and the you know when you say uh, we have to make sure that you you set up properly every time. 
uh, like like I'm going to dismantle my plumbing uh, in, in between gigs or something and, and come in back with like a different set of in twenty over twenty years experience as board of health. We've had oysters, buckets of oysters in the sunshine with no ice. We've had all kinds of things over the years, and it is my opinion that it's important to to inspect every single food truck every single time. You've had buckets of oysters, even though they knew you were coming. I thought that they, they'd be adhering to a higher standard if they, if they knew we you come. were coming. That's why we come. And yeah, one, not, you know, we're not saying that you you yourself would ever do anything um, uh, that doesn't, because you're obviously very interested in food safety and, that, and you know, both as Mike Bertera and as a, a mobile business. Um, but it's like, uh, trust but verify. <laughs> And if it's it's a cost for somebody who has to spend time to travel to your location and travel to you know her home again um, and perform work, it's everything gets more expensive every year, right? Uh, we went through COVID. We had twenty percent inflation in two years, so we've had the thirty-five fee for how long? What? You know, so it's probably been fifteen years. And we haven't raised the fee at all. So $15 increase in a inflationary environment that we ex experienced in the last three years doesn't seem huge. It, uh, again, it, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, sorry. So, yeah. uh, it can be huge. You know, I just, for example, I just went to tree house. I barely make $300. And if I have to pay $50, it doesn't even cover. That's, that, that's so, why we're working with Treehouse because no, I'm, I'm just saying hypothetically, like yeah. you know, if I go somewhere, like let's say, you know, someone hiring me to like if I want to park at somewhere, and then you know, you, you never know when you doing the food truck, you never know what day is going to be. Mm -hmm. It's not always that we make good money. Well, I understand that. Yeah, you, you know. know? And that's my my point is like you now we come down here just to con, um, have your guys reconsider it about the fee to just a flat annual and eliminate the temporary fee of 35. What, what would be the flat annual fee. cost? You know, like I, let's say for Springfield, I pay 250 a year. The most expensive in that. I, Springfield that. is the most expensive. But like I have the all the list of the cow that I do, have. Do they inspect? Yes, they come out. I have to bring my truck for inspection, and then they can pop up in my food truck at any time. And I e they? email them. Yes, they do. Yes. I have to bring my truck, and then they know where I park because I have to email, and we always communicate mm -hmm. that I'm going to show up, I'm going to be here. Same thing like Northampton. East Hampton, they all know because the place I go is yeah, always yeah. a specific place. Mm -hmm. So, and we are a frequent vendor in the town. It's not like we are so and so just come from New Jersey or New York right. and just coming down here and you have to li really I, keep an eye. I, on. I, 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 uh, the only thing I can tell you is that we're working on this to, to your benefit with Treehouse, but I'm sorry, we have to cover our costs. We are we have to budget money and we don't have money to subsidize food trucks. That's just the way it is. We're, we're not saying that you should subsidize food trucks. I, I think that, that your, your system of inspection is, is overkill and, and, and doesn't. Uh, I'm sorry, we know. disagree with you. Uh, do you, do you we're do the board of health and we feel have, like it's necessary um, to have inspection every time. So um, I'm sorry. So uh, aside from your feelings that you want to have uh, uh, inspections every time, uh, are there statistics or numbers that, that, that you can show me that, that show that, that, uh, that food trucks in other towns that aren't as inspected every time? Uh, Hi, I don't have- We're concerned with Deerfield. We're concerned with Maybe. Deerfield and, and the fact that we don't have the capacity to do a foodborne illness in, uh, inspection investigation if necessary. So okay. this is how we're being preventative. I, you know, I, I, it's not that we're cold or don't care. And I understand like you work the whole day and you make 300 bucks and then you pay 50 bucks out. It's a, it's a concern of mine. And I, I do, um, it, it's a hard balance as a municipality. We need to cover our costs. You need to cover your, you need to make a living. Right. And so, and this is the living that you, chose to do and want to do and have a 
uh, have a love for doing that. And I'm sure your customers appreciate that. We're trying to find a way to cover our costs. And I know you think it's overkill. Maybe it is. It's working. We don't have any illness. Um, it's not the end all be all. I, I continue to think about this, but I, it, we just, it's got to be a way that we can make sure that we're safe, that we're covering our inspectors to come and do the work. It is usually on a weekend and it's on a night and you're traveling from who knows where to do that. Hard to find people in this municipal industry to do inspections. It's not a, uh, it's not, there's not tons of people lining up to, to hire. So we pay good money to, to make sure that we're covered in doing all this. Um, and it's so weekend work. That's I why mean, it's been, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That's why we've been working with Trios to say, okay, how? I mean, it's not fair that all the burden is on is on the food truck. An institution like that, if they're not investing in the kitchen, should invest in in the you know should be paying to to support those food vendors coming. And that's why we've kind of struck this deal. And they're like, look, they understand it, they get it. It's a benefit to their clients. It shouldn't all be on your shoulders. So you know, we'll continue to work on it and try to figure out ways to to make it beneficial for everybody. Again, we have to cover our costs. We have to make sure people are safe. And, you know, we want you to make a living and we we enjoy food trucks in our community doing the, you know, bringing, bringing good, good quality food to, to residents and, you know, people. It's, it's, it's a hard balance. Um, you know, I don't know what is enough. We feel like we should inspect every time we set up and 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 a new vendor comes in town. You have to be kind of uh, also you have to be um, have a policy that covers everybody, right? I mean, you're coming often, uh, like we've had with other vendors who were in one spot. We try to make it affordable for them if they're going to stay there and just not take down and and set up every time. You know, we'll keep thinking and trying to figure out ways to make it more affordable, um, but it has to cover our cost as well without jeopardizing safety. And so every time we show up at Treehouse, even Treehouse cover the cost, but we still need to fill up the application. No, 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 no more. No, no. That's one time deal. One time. Okay. We're trying to find ways to make it we're trying beneficial. To make it, yes, we're yes, trying to work I, with I appreciate that, but you know, it's. I know, but we're stuck too. And we have to cover our costs. You know, there's just nothing. And and it actually, we would have not raised the fee if we didn't realize that we weren't covering our costs. I mean, we probably wouldn't have reviewed it. So thank you. Um, I know it doesn't seem to help, but. Valerie, just to clarify uh, for myself, um, what we're saying is that there's an annual fee. They. Um, for pre-inspection. Right, for pre-inspection. And that. Um, if they work at Treehouse under the new suggested regimen, that they're not going to pay another fee while they're working there. Correct. Even if you inspect. Correct. So yeah, that looks like a direct benefit to me. Um, maybe there are other locations in town where this is going to be adopted and put in place so that many of the places that both of you probably work at will fit into that rubric of places where you're not going to get another fee, even if you get an, an inspection. You're going to fill out one form at the beginning of the year. You're going to get a pre-inspection, and that's an annual inspection. Yes. Yeah. And then as you go to these vendors' uh, locations where um, there are agreements in place, um, that you're not going to have any more expense for, for those locations. With whom do I negotiate the uh, La Cucina Lupita style seasonal? With Valerie. Okay. She'll decide how the best to set it up. Similar probably to Atlas, whatever she did with Atlas. Are you going to do that at Michael Terra? We're working on it, yeah, at Michael Terra, which is, which is my base of operation. Great. And yeah. we have to, I, how do we know, like uh, inform you that we are coming to Treehouse? Or Treehouse will be the one that contact you guys. Treehouse, how how far in advance does Treehouse contact you? To be honest with you, because um like this recently that um they just did the anniversary. At first they don't think they're gonna do it, and then when they decide they decide to do it, it's just like a uh, two days, three days. They're just asking me to cover. Okay, so if you you, know? you have my email, I would like it if you could email me when you're going to be at Treehouse. Treehouse is also going to send me a list, 
but I know how things change. Trucks yeah. break, people get sick, yeah, whatever. If you could also email me, and we you ha we have our email addresses, so so just so I would know for sure. Mm -hmm. Thank you. At least you know it's help with the tree house because by far last year I think I spent more than seven hundred dollars. Right. Compared to any other town, by far you guys are the most expensive town. Right. So and I, I and I understand. You know, but on the conversely, we we have to cover Valerie's time. And yeah. But in the case of um, you know, the Holyoke Comes Company, locally based, probably have a base of operations in a you know fixed location in town. There seems like a logical reason why you would make some sort of a, a different arrangement um with valerie but that's again she'll you and you'll talk with her she'll bring it to us and uh you know we'll you're make not setting up and dismantling and you know you're you're in one place and that's fine are you talking about doing like a pop-up dinner like it was before um or no. working out of your food truck yeah it would be out of the food truck it would be out of the food truck but 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 also you know it, it's it it, it it could be a you know a hybrid situation for instance um uh, you know, they're, they're, most everything that we we make, we uh, we prep uh, uh, in in the kitchen, mm -hmm. and then it's just cold holding uh, to take it to the truck. So, right. and the only thing that I do on the truck, uh, the only cooking that I do on the truck is frying. So, so if if somebody um, you know wants uh, hummus and chips, mm -hmm. um, uh, I, I don't, I, I wouldn't necessarily bring the hummus out to the truck, serve it from the truck. Uh, right. And then and then put it back. I might serve the hummus from 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 inside, uh, you know, our our kitchen there directly from the, the walk in. Um, uh, uh, but but if they want something fried, I would fry that that on in the, the truck. truck. Yeah, okay. I'm sure we could work out something on that. I'm I'm sure, sure Valerie can yeah. figure out a way we'll to make talk. it safe. Okay. Great. All right. Thank you. And and you know, please, um, as this treehouse thing evolves. Um, let us know how you feel it's working. You know, if it's not working, we I need to know. I think that's going to be great. Yeah. I just yeah. say that it sounds like it's going to be good now, but if you have difficulties or there's the problems arise, then then just keep well, us informed. Trying to, like you were saying, if someone gets sick and, it, and you only have a, a little bit of a notice, a day or two notice, it's hard for us to process the amount of paper too. So the idea is at the end of the month, Valerie, who has done all the inspections, will then build the, the treehouse for the for those inspections at fifty dollars a piece. And you don't have to deal with all the paper. And you don't have yeah, to deal because, with the paper. Yeah, to be honest with you, like last year, I think um, I just notified them, but forgot to fill up the application. You know, yeah. And I every um, you know, I for me, I never go to a town without any permit. So right. I want to be sure that sure. I do everything correctly. I don't want to have, you know, my bad reputation, you know, to bring it to Grateful any town. That. And, yeah. and so that's the kind that you're the kind of food truck we want. You know, sometimes it's just like, if I got notified, like, hey, someone can't, so I yeah. cannot just show up, you know, right. e even I want to help them out. Right. That is my thing, you know. Sure. So yeah. because that happened three house in Charlton, I'm a frequent vendor there. They have more than 200 vendors wow. that go over there. Yeah. So, and sometimes if someone like, hypothetically, they're supposed to show up at 11 or 12, they still not show up. They just send me the message, like, can you show up at two? Sure. You know? So that's my my concern is that's why I'm asking for the annual permit because I think that would be the most reasonable thing and very it's going to be working very well for all the food vendors mm -hmm. because at treehouse in the field right now is all the repeat vendor right. that you guys see all mm -hmm. the time that's why i thought like john saying like you know for bali to show up every day maybe it's not necessary but when you mention it's four consecutive days so if she inspect the first day for another four day, uh, three day, you don't have to worry about it. But what happened if we be at tree house on Monday and then after four days, the fifth day or the sixth day, we be there for a whole week, then, you know, my concern is if that cost adding too much for the tree house, will they still need the food truck? Yeah, I think they will. 
Uh, yeah, basically, the thing is that it's blanket, right? They so put in a if they bring in somebody one day, somebody the next day, somebody the next day, somebody the next day, that's $200, right? Mm -hmm. They bring you in one day and then you come back four days later, it's still cheaper. Mm -hmm. So they're not, they're not going to punish you because the town has an inspection regimen. It doesn't make any sense, right? They they want quality vendors who serve good food. They want it to be safe. They don't want to be involved in investigation. They don't want to invest in all that. So it's a state investigation, and that's why we just don't have the capacity. That's why we're doing it. Mm -hmm. I don't have anything against the inspection, yeah. and I like mm -hmm. that, you know. But and all it does just is verify that you are safe and yeah. off the hook. People can't be sick if you're. Uh, running a you know a standard high standard operation mm -hmm. but um the last part this year if you try this out and if you ever thinking about seasonal permit that would be amazing okay. with the flat rate all right i don't mind pay 250 for all year you know mm -hmm. yeah because food truck we very starting what may june until probably the end of october that's it Mm -hmm. I, yeah, but it wouldn't be for two fifty because we can't cover our costs at two fifty. Yeah, I don't, I don't know enough about that question to agree with what she said, but obviously it's something we can consider. Yeah, yeah. that would be um, right, you know, because. I mean, I know that there there are lots of costs. It's expensive to do what we do, so I'm not saying yay or nay on on a specific Thank number. Thank you. Thank right. you. Thanks. Good night. Um, so we have two things to vote on. We have to vote on the um, memorandum of agreement with Treehouse okay. for this um, um, $50 per inspection um, that Valerie and Chris have worked so hard on to propose. So I would make a motion that we vote on the MOU or MA, MOA um, with Treehouse for the um, mo mobile food vendors. Second that motion. Is there is there someone from Treehouse here? No, no, no. Okay. And can I make a request? Sure. sure. Would one of you be able to read it just so the public knows what's oh, being sure. voted on? Right. It is hereupon agreed that effective January tenth, um, the Board of Health of the Town of Deerfield will discontinue the practice of requiring direct payments for inspection fees from mobile food vendors which conduct business at Treehouse Brewing Company located at one community place in the village of South Deerfield. The town will intend uh, instead issue a monthly bill to Treehouse Brewing Company and the equivalent of $50 per inspection. The inspections by the Deerfield Board of Health are to be are to remain mandatory for all food vendors each time they return to the premises. This protocol is applicable only to food, mobile food vendors conducting business on the above named premises of Treehouse Brewing Company. Inspection fees still were required from all food, mobile food vendors conducting business elsewhere in the town of Deerfield. Okay. Okay. All those in favor? Kim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Um, we also have uh, one more thing to vote. Um, we need to raise the fees um, for food vendors from $35 to $50. After working um, with Valerie and Chris extensively, um, the $50 seems um, more reasonable to cover our expenses um, of calling Valerie out. Okay, here we go. Do you have a second? Second. Is there any more discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Kim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. We okay. would like to just continue to think about this, uh, you know, not we set are. in stone, try are. to find a way to make it affordable for people to do business. But I, you know, it's, it's also just to hit on this again, there are also people who do the same kind of business, but have to pay rent and have, you know, Meals real estate tax, meals tax, you know, all the kitchen equipment that goes along with running a business like this in a, in a, in town as well. So it, it's a hard balance between the two. Um, we're not here to balance that, but we're here to just make sure the foods are inspected 
um, and and that we cover our costs enough to cut, make sure people are safe. When do when Valerie does a random inspection of the walk-in freezers and stuff like that, uh, you know, and it happens multiple times during the year for mm -hmm. our restaurants. Um, the food the food vendors you have to check and make sure that their mm -hmm. little the, all their cold stuff is cold, all their warm stuff is at appropriate temperature every time because yes. the variable in a food truck is very different than in a in an establishment. Mm -hmm. And that's the main thing. It is. Okay. Um moving on, and I apologize to the open space committee. Um I am so excited to see your um Stuff here. So could you um, introduce yourself? And um, I, I think, uh, is there anybody else? Deborah, the... Deborah Yaffe is a volunteer on the committee. Oh, great. oh Debbie, hey, Deborah. yes. So uh, yes, we there want to is. acknowledge Deborah and- um, Welcome. Thank you, Deborah. <laughs> Deborah, I just waved. Thanks, good to see you. <laughs> And I'm Julie Caswell, Chair of the Open Space and Recreation Committee. Thank you for waiting so long. I apologize. No problem. Um, so we are uh, just dropping by to give you an update on work of the Open Space and Recreation um, Committee. And we first had a first meeting with you on October 4th when we came in to talk about the work on the plan. Yep. And the plan goes from 2023 to 2030, with top priorities being increasing open space protection uh, in the town of Deerfield and making Deerfield uh, more walkable and hikeable. And at that meeting, we talked about um, a first priority being getting conservation restrictions on parcels of land that are owned by the town of Deerfield um, particularly on the Pecumtuck Ridge. And at that point, you were very supportive of that idea and said, come back when you have more to talk about and you've done more work um, on this. So uh, what we've done in the meantime is we've been, let's see, Chris, if you want to go a, a couple slides down. And, uh, one more. So we've been, uh, oh, back one, please. We've been collaborating with the uh, Franklin Land Trust and talking about uh, how we might do conservation restrictions. And the idea that we have um, mm -hmm. uh, come up with at this point is to do, uh, to seek conservation restrictions on four parcels and to do that uh, with two, conservation restrictions. So the first conservation restriction would have Pecumtuck Rock, Pine Nook Forest, and Steve Mill Forest. They're all contiguous to each other. Mm -hmm. And then there would be a second conservation restriction that would be um, for Birchwood Nature Refuge. So if you want to go one more slide and we'll take a look at the map. So uh, number one on this map is Pecumtuck Rock, number yes. two is Pine Nook Forest, and number three is Steam Mill Forest. Mm -hmm. So there'd be one conservation restriction for them as a group. And then the uh, next, uh, the second uh, restriction would be on uh, what's labeled number four, mm -hmm. Birchwood, which is off of Stage Road. Gotcha, yep. So that is the idea we're working with. Franklin Land Trust is uh, at this point still going through its process of reviewing uh, their lands committee needs to make a decision about whether um, they want to go forward with um, with this project. So that's underway. Um, the Open Space and Recreation Committee is writing and planning to submit a grant to the Community Preservation uh, Committee for the March 1st deadline. And we are working with a budget of $45,000 to establish these conservation restrictions. And the, uh, the major expenses are the due diligence. The lawyer work. 
yeah. the title search, yeah. the title certification. There will need to be surveying done because uh, mm -hmm. the, the survey for uh, some of this land goes back to the 1920s and isn't at, to you know current standards yeah. uh, for surveys. Uh, so there's a whole due diligence process to establish the conservation restriction. And then the conservation restrictions will be held by the Franklin Land Trust under a stewardship agreement. So that stewardship agreement um, is based on a, a base report of the, the uh, shape of these properties. And then the Franklin Land Trust um, commits to doing stewardship for the conservation restrictions in perpetuity okay. um, based on the, the, uh, the setup of, uh, of this con the conservation restrictions. So the, so the town is, uh, the, cons the Franklin Land Trust is holding the conservation restrictions on behalf of the town. Does um, any part of the 45 cover, um, I mean, have you, or would that be a second request at some point to um, signage, uh, walking paths, any of that kind of thing? Or is that, that would be down the road once you do all this stuff, you would then maybe relook at how you'd make it walkable. The walkable, hikeable. Yeah, that kind of, you know, some signs, look at parking issues or, any yeah. Stuff. So what what our um, uh, short to medium term plan is to this year get the conservation restrictions in place. Yeah. And then next year we want to um, submit for mass trails grant, yeah. and Perfect. that time frame is they have the grants go in. Um, I think it's February, and then they come out. But that would be. Uh, trails that would be signage yeah. that would be uh, trail heads and uh, okay. other other parts, but that's not part of okay this particular grant. That's great. I, I just had a couple questions. Um, you know, up on the top there is the um, you know the top the cell tower, mm -hmm. and we have to have access. You know that we don't own, even though it's our property, we don't own the road that goes there. How does that um, going to be dealt with in the conservation restriction? Because I know we got to have, um, they have to have access and they have to have the ability to improve it on us. When you put something under restriction, you're not allowed to do what is anything different than it is already there. And I don't know if one of the ways to deal with it, we'd, we'd have to check with a lawyer, but um, we need to, somehow exclude that part of the property because you know they have to have the ability to improve it and do different things up there uh, over the years i know in my time they've done a couple renovations and and done extra development on that cell tower so we have to be able to have them i mean we have a rental agreement so somehow that rental agreement and the access and all that has to be preserved outside of the restriction. Um, I don't, Casey probably has all that information for lawyers to look at, but that needs to be addressed. And then my other concern. Yeah, I think if, if I can just, I think what, ha what would happen with the conservation restriction is, is basically um, cutouts. Okay, then. I'm sure it can be resolved. Yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm just bringing it up that we already have a pre-existing mm -hmm. contract, and and it has to have some flexibility for the future because who knows what's going to happen with that. Right, and and that is always an issue. You know who who controls that road. You know, and we've had hassles back and forth over the years with, you know, um, about the road, and so we've been really strict with the you know people that they have to maintain it and it has to be you know locked so that we're not responsible for trash and responding for kids having beer parties up there and stuff mm -hmm. like that so there's there that actually issue. uh just as a, a side note um it's not uh, the gate is not locked right now and Ugh. 
Um, it's supposed to be locked. Yeah, but I mean, this, I, I think part of Franklin Land Trust, you know, if they're gonna hold the conservation restrictions, they need to have all of this information mm -hmm. like the cell towers, because that's part of their stewardship is to steward the, the land. And they have to know that that's part, a lot of the due diligence is around the title search and all the information about what restriction, what right of ways, what restrictions, what other things are, are on the land. Um, and the other thing I just had is on the, the question of stewardship. Mm -hmm. um, usually no one accepts stewardship responsibilities be, um, without some kind of um, cash payment or, you know, because it, it, you they have to do their yearly inspections and verify for the state when it is in land restriction. So um, who would be paying for that? Stewardship that expense, yeah. The extent the they they refer to it as a stewardship gift, um, and that it is not required. However, they they certainly want it, and it's in this budget of forty five thousand dollars, and it's about thirteen thousand dollars, and so that includes um, them working on. Um, this baseline survey, which is a quite a document about the the, the state of the land. Um, and Franklin Land Trust is on the budget that we have at this point, they would be donating $9,000 towards this, um, this effort through staff time and through, um, um, yeah, basically through staff time. That initial, Thirteen thousand. Does that mm -hmm. cover a specified number of years or forever? Forever. It's just one-time payment. Mm -hmm. Okay. And sir, yeah. Well, Lily Dwight has her hand up. Oh, sorry, Lily. Go I, ahead. Thank you. It's, um, I have a question. Um, when we identified a number of parcels years ago, and these were among them, we had hoped to um get someone to look into carbon credits in exchange for not, you know, for these forested lands staying forested and with the hope that it would actually generate income for the town instead of just being an untaxed property. And I'm wondering if that has been looked at and, and if it's possible for the town to still get carbon credits since if this is being held in stewardship by someone else. Yes, we have uh, looked at that as an option and it doesn't appear to be uh, an option at this point in time. That is, it's, it's not really possible to get payments for carbon sequestration on these properties. A um, couple of questions about that. Um, so is it not possible because of the small size of the parcels or is it because it's not possible to find somebody who's willing to buy the carbon se sequestration rights like on a, you know, open market? Yeah, it, it's not because of the, the these parcels are of a uh, pretty good size. Right. Um, so it it's that there aren't any state or other programs that we have found that would pay for sequestration on these parcels at the moment. At the moment. So is it possible to, as part of the negotiation with Franklin Land Trust, mm -hmm. reserve the rights to this should this become possible in the future? Yes, that's a good point. Yeah. So yeah. I um I know some towns in Massachusetts are collecting carbon sequestration payments. They're paid for their rec department expenses or towards their rec department expenses. Okay. So but, we, yeah. will, we will look further. Yeah, uh, we can. That was a, something that we had talked about a few, a couple of years ago. Was it a couple of years ago, really? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, but but there, the, the Biden administration has, um, they're spending 150 million to help small forest owners benefit from selling carbon credits. I just did a quick 
search on that. So, I, I mean, I think with this administration, things might have changed. Um, so it it was just I didn't want to lose that as a resource for the town if it was possible to keep it. Although I, and preserving the land, I think, is job one. <laughs> but getting yeah, money for yeah. it would be even better. Yeah, if we if we can carve out the um, sequestration rights um, for income towards our rec department, that would be really great. Or whatever we decide to put the money towards. But the idea um, that I liked was a, it was an offset towards some of the regular operating expenses of the town, like a rec department. Well, one thing is, um, you know, you can use CPC money for some of the initial setup of trail systems, et cetera, but once you've done it, you can't use it for maintenance. Right. So having in the future of sequestration fees become a possibility, that could be a great resource for, you know, protecting trail system and keeping it up to, you know, standards. Okay. So um, I, I, I'm a, somewhat new to this whole area, but I'm like three years in, but um, I just, I do want to um, just emphasize this idea that you as a select board will be signing off in order for us to complete conservation restrictions um, you as a select board will be signing off on the red, you know, the registration of these conservation restrictions in perpetuity. Um, we have to talk to Lisa on. We do. I'm yeah. gonna have to because it, uh, it's a procedural thing too. So uh, we might have to. Is it? Do we go to town meeting for that? Mm. I'm not sure. We'll have to check with Lisa. We will have to check with Lisa because I can't remember what the process is. But there would be a legal document anyway, yeah. and that would go through our the restriction town gets council. registered at the registry. Of the yeah, mm -hmm. our town council will be looking at everything anyway. So, um, we would. I mean, this is a long way. It's away a little, so we don't have to decide that tonight. And and honestly, I don't know. The funding pieces are the first pieces because yeah. you're, I'm assuming, I know I have your capital request, but I also am assuming based on what you said earlier that you're putting through a Community Preservation Act request for funding as well for that. Right, on March 1st, for the okay. March 1st deadline will Which be. Which means it would get to annual town meeting. In the meantime, we have time to check with council about that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And did we already support this i think we supported this idea but um you're going to ask us to support a cbc request as well exactly right. okay. yes, yes. Well, so we have... want to take a vote for that to support this, that yeah, so I'm they trying can to reference ask. it on their application yeah. um i mean i certainly support it right now as a as a you know it's a good yeah i mean we support it sure. you know sure. trying appreciate to make the work. sure yeah absolutely so, so we'll you... Do you want to make a motion to authorize, you know, Casey or Casey or Chris Nolan to write a letter of support to the CPC for a proposal for forty five thousand? I cer yeah, I certainly would make that um, motion. Second the motion. Okay. All those in favor? Tim Hill, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank, thank Thank you work. so much. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate your work. Yes, we're, it's exciting. I'm I'm really glad to see that we'll have a trail system and everything like that. I'm not sure if I said it last time, but I want to reiterate it if I did. I am so pleased to see the Open Space and Recreation Committee doing such good work. It's been um, uh, sorely missed in the previous decade or so. And so it's really nice to see the, the job that you're doing. Thank you. Yep. All of you. Yeah, it's, we it's have nice a great have committee this. and uh, three or four uh, volunteers who are with us every single meeting as well. So. That's great. Basically. Yeah, it's great. Thank you, Deborah. Thanks, and Deb. uh, I know you're interested, Lily. So thank you and everybody yeah. else that was committing. Andy up there, <laughs> and Andy. hitting away. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Have a good night. Good night. Yep. You too. Um, Lily. Uh, senior, senior housing update, RFP assistance. Yes. Sorry, it's a little bit later than anticipated. 
Oh, no worries. You guys are always interesting. Um, or I should say y'all. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, we are moving forward as a committee. What we've begun doing is reviewing the Sunderland RFP that was created when they developed um, Sanderson Place. And in doing that, we recognize that we are willing to do the donkey work, um, but we definitely want to make sure that it is done correctly. And so after calling around, um, I was directed to the FERCOG as being the people who can help us. I spoke with Megan Rhodes uh, earlier this week and clarified with her that we are willing to draft it. Um, but that what we wanted was intense professional scrutiny to ensure the um, the that the RFP is correct. And um, she said that absolutely. And I said I asked if she could. And I and apparently Casey was on the same case. So thank you, Casey. <laughs> and I said that what I needed to come to you all with was. I, tell me the most it's going to cost if you are an editor, but not just any editor. I, we need an intense editor. <laughs> and um, she emailed me earlier today saying that it would not exceed $3,000. Yep. Um, in the meantime, Kathy Sylvester, who is also here, Kathy is the chair of the Community Prevent Community Preservation Committee, as well as serving on the Senior Housing Committee. Um, it begins to seem a little incestuous, but anyway, um, what we want clarity on, and Kathy is talking to the CPA organization, we have been approved by town meeting for, um, to perform, to contract for all these services in the process of moving forward with senior housing, but we did not specifically list contracting with the FERCOG um, to, to do this review of the RFP. We have enough money in all of our approved requests, both for the specific services, but also because of the fantastic negotiating process undertaken by the select board in the actual purchase of the St. James property, we, we have more, um, money than requested and we do anticipate <clears throat> that we'll need it you know we paid for the surveyor out of that and things like that so my understanding is that the FERCOG is a relationship that is managed by the select board so I wanted to come to you all and make sure that we do this right and and Kathy's going to be talking to the community preservation organization to verify that this works and if it doesn't we are going to go back to the cpc with another application etc cetera, etc cetera. but we we want to use the FERCOG, and i think we need to come to you to do that it's a it's a contract under twenty five thousand, lily i can sign that um and i will talk to brenda because i do think this falls within development costs yeah, I um, mean, honestly, and if it falls within development costs, I don't yeah, have a question about this it. This is the RFP for the right. development, and it, it is. You, this is part of the process, Lily. So, and frankly, you know, both of us finding out about the three thousand dollars is helpful. <laughs> well, uh, we're doing all the work in the senior housing of review, so that we'll right. have we'll have uh, the RFP that Sunderland did converted to the Deerfield. Um, RFP, mm -hmm. but we wanted somebody to look at it and make sure there was no loopholes, no, no issues, and that's why we wanted to go to the FERCOG. Yeah, no, it makes sense to me. Okay, I so did... actually, um, I have an additional question. Um, there was a fantastic article about our fabulous new town planner in the Gazette today. And I am wondering, um, I think that if we could tap his expertise um, in both um, reviewing the housing production plan, which is an important step in this, as well as um, have him review 
or maybe even work with us. I, I'm sure he's super busy, but I'm wondering if we wanted to uh, tap into him as a resource, what would be the process for doing that? The problem with the housing plan is it's 2013. Hmm? Our master plan is 2010, so I'm not sure. The master plan's 2000. Is it? I, yes. thought, I thought we had a review, uh, an update at 2010. No, 2000? Well, we're pretty out of date, so I'm not sure how productive it is for his time to review the old plans. Let's say it's, well, you know, whether we're compliant with what was happening in 2013. I mean, that was 10 years ago. But we need we need to incorporate the directives of the housing production plan of Deerfield as we move forward. So uh <laughs> if he could pull the plan and we could see what it looks like, I guess. I don't remember. Yeah, we're we're going to be reviewing it in our committee meeting at senior the next senior housing committee meeting we'll be walking through it. Um so maybe how about this? What if we as we go through it, as we come up with specific questions, um we could put them in an email to I Oh, yeah, let's. I I know I'm going to be. Hopefully, we'll be in Boston, but I'm going to try to zoom in on that because I have a meeting at six anyway that I have to zoom in on. So, um, I'll I'll try to make that meeting. And we can go over the production plan, and then maybe I just don't want to have bog them down with reviewing an old plan that has nothing to do with what. Under totally understand. There's so many other things he needs to be I mean, doing, but we yeah. want if if we could. He to bring fresh eyes to it. Casey okay. has to make, and then Annalie has her hand up. So who wants to go first? Go ahead, Annalie. Uh, thank you. Um, yes, just Lily, uh, the planning board, I believe, is uh, the one that oversees the housing production plan. So maybe if you could invite someone from the planning board to attend that meeting when you're going through it, that might help expedite things. Casey? Um, my comment was, is these are tasks that are assignments to the planner. So we need to get a better idea. I, I would like to know exactly what you're looking for, Lily, because, you know, That's he's, so he's onboarding still. So we don't want to inundate him with too much. And Christopher is an amazing resource. Um, but we sort of need to have, if you have questions, maybe we, you send them over to me and we can sort of coordinate with Chris and he could meet with you. And you I mean, that's exactly why I wanted to bring it up now to find out what's the best way to do this that doesn't interfere with everything you're trying to do, but gets us answers. Right. That works. Cool. Thank you. Do you, um, I'm just curious, Lily, does the senior housing committee have a, uh, like a, a timeline for when you want to, get this RFP assistance done? Um, well, we can't, I mean, we're, we're getting a little in front of our skis, but not a lot because we're doing the work um, because we do not, we need to have public meetings and um, architectural renderings for people to discuss, to go into the RFP. What I saw in the Sunderland process was, believe it or not, they originally were looking for like 18 units. And obviously they had to change that because there was no developer who would build 18 units. So it even the RFP is kind of a process um, and, and has to get modified. So what we wanted to do was get it really clearly stated what our intentions are and have everything done and then put in the information from the public meetings, et cetera. So this RFP is not going to go out before the summer. That's for sure. Um, just because of how long it takes to do everything and to have public meetings. But I, I am trying, well, not just me, the whole committee is trying to make sure our ducks are all in a row and that we can get this out ASAP. Does that answer your question? Yeah, no, it's 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 exciting that you're actually, you know, talking about an RFP. So that's <laughs> it's really good. Lily's keeping us working. We need <laughs> <a> week. <laughs> All right. 
Lily, I want you to know I really appreciate coming in. I didn't come in, but <laughs> <laughs> um, so my understanding is then, Casey, you're gonna check with um town council and get back to me, but you're pretty comfortable right now. I am. Yeah. Thank you. Excellent. We have consensus. We the select board is in consensus that three thousand dollars is out of money. That, that's approach. a very reasonable thing for I what know. they're asking. This is a complicated RFP. Yeah. And and you will um just let us know what uh, Stuart Sagan or whomever says about you know your ability to expend money under an existing agreed upon and approved thing versus having to go back to town meeting. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks. We just wanted to make sure that there is absolutely no question. That's all. So thank you. And thank you, Kathy Sylvester, for um, doing the research. Yeah, I'm still waiting to hear back from Stuart. Um, I just sent him the motions for the town meeting today. He wanted to see those. Um, but I, he also, you know, we saw the, I sent him all the other stuff, the application and all the. Perfect. Perfect. Attachments to the application. But... All right. Wonderful. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Great. Thanks. Have a nice evening, you guys. I mean, you can stick around, but. <laughs> okay. Next item on the agenda is the Building Resilient Infrastructure Communities Brick Grant. It was thank you to Casey and Chris who worked manically all day Monday trying to get mostly Chris <laughs> trying to get this in um, by the deadline at the end of the day. So Chris, I can't thank you enough for um, taking all Mima's um, comments and following up and making sure that we had documentation from the police department, the highway department, the, you know, old Deerfield fire department, uh, you know, water district fire department, and um, all the answers to the town commitments to it. And it's pretty exciting. It's moving forward and hopefully uh, Mima's gonna review it one more time before it goes down to DC to FEMA. Thank you. Thank you. And you know what, Chris, I can't remember the exact dollar amount. What was the dollar amount request? I believe it was 3,370,000. Yeah, well, that was pretty exciting. That's and, definitely. And is there an additional match on top of that? In yes. other words, there is. I, Carolyn, do you remember the percentage? I, I can't remember the percentage match. Okay. Over $4 million grant, ultimately. Um, and the match is being made by Eagle Brook. So if we get the grant, it's an investment of well over $4 million into our town. It's pretty exciting. Yeah. So thank you, Chris, to make it happen. Uh, Absolutely. I hope we get something to show for it. Yeah. That's one of the first grants on the road um, repair for the next few years. Um, we'll be seeing a lot of these. And some of them repeat when we don't get them, but um, and we have to resubmit. But I, I just want to say this is pretty exciting. So thank you, Chris. Um, next item on the agenda is fiscal year 2024 budget reductions, service reductions, current project freezes. Um, I don't want to really spend a lot of time on it tonight. There it really isn't much we can do, number one. There isn't any money to cut. Yeah, I mean, we're we are ending up shutting down departments and all kinds of stuff. So let's talk just, about it next meeting. Yeah, we'll we'll talk about it. Um, I want. I was wondering if you wanted you all wanted to um, post a meeting on the seventeenth, just in case, because um, we if if the vote fails, we have capital. No, I have. I have a capital improvement planning committee at Frontier on the 17th. And I have a FERCOG finance then committee meeting. Then we're going 18, 19. I mean, we're posted for Boston. Can we chat about it there? Okay. Yeah. All right. That's All like right. a good plan. Chris, don't let me forget. We do have to post for Boston. Yeah. You got it. Thank you. Um. Yeah. I just don't want to spend a lot of time because it, it's wasted time. It is. We're going to. It is. It's you later. Also it is. Oh it's going to yeah. just concern people that you know, yep. which hopefully we're not going to have to deal with. Okay. So um, 
we did, Kevin gave us some um, road updates earlier. Uh, fiscal 25 budgets and annual town meeting for consideration. I don't, didn't know if we wanted to start. I know we're all exhausted, but. Um, so I worked some... on the budgets and what you see there is what I worked on. And, the, you know, I was. Budget sheets here? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Let me just. Um... We're, we're going. going to... um, reports. It's like we had the reports, so we had to turn them in at least something. What? Um, oh, these. Those. Yeah. No, yeah. I was talking about yours and Chris's reports. They're like a meeting in themselves. Yeah. There's so much information you guys are working on. It's unbelievable. Yeah. One thing I wanted, to, you know, again, I'm not, I'm, I'm actually wondering if we could talk about Chris providing an electronic version of this that we can all just go into our computer and I have difficulty following what papers are where in this pile. And <laughs> I see you know, Trevor reading something that I haven't seen. It's in here, but I just don't know where it is. And Chris, if you might explain how you used to do things in your previous uh, town of where, and uh, it sounds like you can do things and put things in, in the electronic you know, presentation in a, in a really easy order to follow. But Tim, I just built a new shelf. I know. <laughs> no, I agree with you. It makes sense. It makes sense. I can I, I can put all my hard copies of the right. photos of road destruction up there. Exactly. But like, so I'm not sure is is this 2024 detail expenditures with total spending? Is that part of what we're talking about, or is that it's something? It's Board of Health. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so I printed the budget stuff separately. right before it is DPC and Waterline. Oh yeah. And I'm. No, so it's this packet. Here. I know I'm, I'm I had a separate packet just for budgets. I'm yep. aiming it up a little bit. I just, <laughs> yeah. So this is part of this. It was actually it, there it, so it, that people could have a frame of reference for yeah, board of yeah, health. Yeah, yeah. Um and again, you you're probably not gonna wanna you're gonna wanna dig into it a bit, but at least if you had that we can particular review. report, yeah, yeah, you could well we're gonna have to um for the Board of Health, we are not covering our expenses. So we're going to have to have a reserve transfer at the end of the year. Well, that's going to go over like a. No, because we're collecting, no, we're collecting fees. We're, okay. we're, she's she's out doing inspections. <laughs> Where's the. Um, do you want to go over that budget now or not? Or do we want to go over any of these I think budgets? You or wait for to go over Board of Health, no, but, but at I mean, least you have it. Do we want to look at any of these tonight or do we want to just review them and then bring them to the finance committee meetings no you know what we always look at the you know in the past we've always been able to sit down in you boston. know in boston and go over Our do budgets. we have any problems right and or we'll do, do we that. have any concerns we'll and, take this with us okay and so Perfect. if you can look at thank you for your work all, uh, this. yeah appreciate it and i know you have work to do on um Contracted services, there's IT yeah, stuff. Yeah, so well, I have contracted services budget. to really work through. Yeah. That's one of the tougher ones right now. It's a catch-all. It, it, I know. It's but it also, we've got to make some transitions. I mean, one of the problems we have right now is our phones are dying. And a better solution now is to do a subscription service that includes new units. But we need to do a little research on what the most cost-effective effect, yeah. option might be. So that's holding up contracted services. Right. Okay. What I wanted to do is these budgets that some of which are easy to come yeah, it's bring like together yeah. are easy for you guys to absorb. One thing I will say, and I, I wrote it in my report, if you want to read through it is um, legal is a confirmed cost. Mm -hmm. I made some reductions in litigation, but I, we had an increase in our overall monthly fee. So I made those adjustments when I talked to Brenda, mm -hmm. um, a lot of these IT hardware went up slightly, not a lot, but we have more people, we have more costs. Yep. And in terms of, you know, just the cost for IT stuff is expensive anyway. The, okay. the electronics themselves are more expensive. So there's many things that are pretty solid now. It's just, um, I think you guys should take some time to review them. And you know, as well as I do, that throughout the discussions with Finance Committee, you guys are going to tweet these things. Yeah, yeah, we do. So just uh, just so I understand, um, in addition to the the board of health expenditures or whatever this pending totals is, um, there are also the unfunded sick leave, yes. council on aging, agricultural commission, mm -hmm. 
<clears throat> are those part of the general government budget? Yes. Okay. No, actually, some of them no. are different budgets. Some of them are outside of general government. Right. Okay. Some, in other words, some of them are outside the 100 series. The, the, well, it counts on aging is. You were talking about legal, and I noticed labor is up. Do we have contract negotiations coming we do. next year? Okay. That's why labor is up. That's fine. Yep, just wondering. So we made a reduction in litigation to cover that. Uh, you've got two CBAs and three other contract talks. Seems like they just seem to fall all at the same time. Because that's what we do. We got to hey, stagger them. Somewhere. Is there? Yeah. Is it possible <laughs> to adjust the period of time that one of these covers so you won't well, make one four years? Yeah. And until um, you get them all and falling in different years, statutory. give something. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes. Some of them are statutory. Yeah. Sometimes right. you can you can negotiate that. Right. Uh, well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I think yeah. if yeah. if we have one of these a year, right. It would be a lot easier to handle than all of them at once. I know. Yeah, we wind up that way at the schools. It too, happens so. at the school all the yeah. time. Yeah. It just it seemed like it comes around so fast. Mm -hmm. Ugh. Okay. Time passes way too fast. <laughs> all right. It does. All right. Moving on. Yep. Okay. So we'll look at this. Why don't you think, now? I lost yeah, my agenda. Questions. Just call me. I lost my agenda. Ah. Uh, well, so going back to what Tim was saying about the packets, if anybody wants me to stop printing them paper packets, I'm happy to save the tree and yeah. uh, just send you the digital version. But uh, that's up to each of you individually. If any of you prefer paper, I'm still happy to print it. But uh, digital is if we can't find it, you're here and we can say, where is it? And, and you can say, oh, go to page 27 or whatever the heck it is. Yeah, precisely. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I did that with Ashfield. I transitioned so to select board at one annual point. Permits, it's I easier think, to deal with. Annual permits was, here, I'll, I'll let you use this. Annual permits was the next item here, but I think that was just left over. We don't have anything. I think if we don't have any, we don't have to address okay. it, but we may have a few that come up here. And there. Letters of support. support was just the, um, the, the brick the grant open, one was finished. Yeah. yeah. And the yeah. brick grant ones are finished and we're just talking about the open space ones. We already voted so on that. So the letter of support, Chris, we're going to have to come up with a letter of support. I don't know what Julie wants to see. I can ask what she needs specifically. Is the change order for DPC on this agenda? No, it's not. I was going to uh, I sent you, I had asked you whether we needed, because I don't remember that one. Yeah, it's it's the one that we've been hanging on to and not committing to oh. until we got to the very end of the project. And it, it's the uh, site work. You can put it on the budget. Um, you could put it on the next meeting. The next uh, it's agenda. not critical. They're going to move ahead with it anyways, because we have the money and, and we're doing, that's the site drainage work. There's a couple of minor pieces like okay. um, just finishing up stuff, changing piping and other things that we've approved already, but mainly it's the drainage. It's not on this agenda. So yeah, because I wasn't sure whether we needed at, to like what the timeline. Add it next time. Yeah. Okay. It's, we're it's gonna add it next time then because um it isn't on the agenda. Yep, let's add it oh. next time and then I'll explain it then. Um so what do we got next? Um uh, was Leary Larry Lot. I mean, what we what we do need to do with Leary Lot is really figure out what we're cutting because <laughs> we don't have enough money to do the project, right? So we, I mean, out of ARPA. No, right? that's not true. Oh, I thought no. it was six hundred and eighty. Well, no, it's it's actually uh, the the draft says that from when it was last done to the one nine, it went down fifty thousand dollars. Unless I'm not reading this properly. Well. I thought we had put 400 and something, 475, and it's yeah, 600 and something. Then yeah, you we, added some. We you Yeah, we got we got the 91,000 back from the HVAC, so that bumps it up again. Right. So it's it's within. You're you're within a decent amount. Like, it's I think it's doable. We're within the contingency. Right. Like we don't have a huge contingency. Right. Um. So just to clarify, the handout that I gave you in this packet is similar to the one that you got at your last meeting. Uh, right. But this one includes some value engineering options. So small cuts that could be made to the original proposal to save some money. Um, and it brought the total down from 680,000 to 630,000. For example, I think one of them was replacing a brick sidewalk with cement. Um, another one was removing the seat wall that had been included. Um, there are just some small things that the board has the option to weigh if they 
want to prioritize keeping or potentially cut some costs? So we could, in, in the RFP, we could put them out as um, first alternate, second alternate, third yes. alternate, yes, because if the bids that. come back lower, um, then we could reconsider well, putting them. something back in. Yes, that's exactly. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. So in, one thing that would be helpful, obviously, um, it looks reasonable to me in the sense of, you know, it's within... 50,000 of what we probably have, but it would be nice to know what's left of the original money we dedicated to it. Right. Um, and if any of these costs, I mean, Berkshire design has been working on this. Is that, is that work included in this budget or is there an additional fee? So have we already paid some of this money? We paid some of the engineering costs, like some of this engineering we've been paying for. I'd love to see it just a quick, like you so you a breakdown, a total yeah. a breakdown, what we spent, what we what we could pull aside and maybe have an in-depth conversation about that. And yeah, provided if we get any of the grants we're looking for for eight eight for the um for the charging systems, what what does that affect? How much are we gonna have to pay in? Are there other, you know, how how does that affect the whole picture too? Um, okay. Right. I'm sure that we don't have that grant. If we get one, yeah. Yeah, yeah right. we need to give that a little bit of time. Yeah, Anytime you time. can get, I can have Brenda do a detail for you guys. That'd be great. You know, and and also if we have uh, MVP money, even though there's, you know, right, we're gonna figure out how to finesse the match. Yes. Um, yeah, so. The MVP correct. money is not reflected in here for tree box filters, for swales, for, and that's you know, already, and, that's already and it's in the proposal. That's right. So okay. that sounds good. That is very true. The ordering of sort of where the funding sources are, Chris. All the green infrastructure is supposed to be paid for by the MVP. Except for the match. Except for the match, right. So maybe we should start looking so at the spreadsheet so what, on what it. Work, what it works out to be is 75. Yeah, I think you're right, Casey. I think uh, yeah, we can carve some time out and look at it because she's right. There's multiple pots here. And if we could take a detail breakdown in an Excel spreadsheet, the two of us can, you know, between the two of us, I think we can make it look understandable, not look I, understandable, I, but be understandable. And I don't know. And I want us to have plenty of time to prioritize anything that we're going to add as an alternate mm -hmm. big yeah. thing. Because you're 680 versus 630 here. Yeah. So, but I don't think I. I mean, I think we have enough money to cover between the MVP and um, our opera money and the um, grant. Okay. And I. So you're cautiously optimistic, but yeah. we need more. Yeah. We need better numbers. Is we what Trevor's asking for. Yeah. yeah. Basically, the the sources of revenue that are all available to the project, whether it's MVP or ARPA. Yeah. Or um, the EV charging. E thing. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Whatever. Um, that's going to just. Yeah. Um, yep. But I, I am actually quite pleased as well. I mean, I would like to see this project Happen. out to RFP yeah. and awarded yes. by the end of February. Okay. That's what I think That's because I thought the end of January we should. Well, well I don't know how we're going to do think that. I don't know you're going to be able to go through add alternate we'll questions February. by the end yeah. of January. Maybe we 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 say February 15 and yeah. be satisfied with February 28th. Perfect. Well, Sounds good. What's our timeline with Jeff, Chris? Why? Um, I, I I don't think we have a set specific one right now. I mean, okay. we, he thinks it'll be bid ready within a couple of weeks from now. So, yeah. okay. um, so we iron yeah. those though. Then yeah. we have we have a couple. Yeah. Yeah, asked. just a couple more details to iron out with him. Um, yeah. Especially with EV charging and the green infrastructure and some of the other details that are still being worked out um yep. but yeah that will that will come to fruition within the next month i would say pretty safely do you think you could have something so we when we're talking about budgets we you could let us talk about this in boston i don't know that we'll be able to get there carolyn if you can right. great if, if you not can. You know, no we, um, what i'd like to be able just to do like is spend, spend the time to get choice. it done right so you can have a yeah and I have every confidence Chris can do that. Yeah. Oh, no, we just I need information. And the two of us need to sort of talk but through what I, it looks like. I just like. want us to be able to talk about it. And and if we're doing it in a meeting, it, you know, we're always rushed to try to keep the meeting as short as possible. And 
So um, maybe we do a separate meeting just to discuss that. Yeah, well, I think that's it's worth it. Yeah. Yeah. But okay. I mean, a lot of this information about the budget should be available relatively quickly. It's yeah. it's not like we don't know where the money is. Right. No, I, it's not. It's it's, it's not. It's time. just I don't want to put too much. There's still some stuff we have to get ready for. Oh yeah. No, I mean digest the so we how to make this work. But as you say, Jeff Squires says yeah. that the RFP yeah. could arrive in one or two weeks. Yeah. And you know, we're gonna we're gonna be able to to tell them yes we want to um we want to la label these what is the total um you know benefit of alternate one and you know if they can work it back in yeah and that should be relatively easy to accomplish i would think it's similar to what you did with the architect for the tilton library Open exactly committee yep so it's that's why I say a focused conversation makes a lot more sense. Yep, absolutely. I agree it's with just, you. There's a little back end work, Chris, that we got to okay. do. Okay. I'm not trying to cut everyone. Sounds off. good. Moving on here. Mm -hmm. um, general appointments. Yeah. We have a poll worker, a uh, yep. student good. volunteer, Jillian Warden. Thank you, Jillian. And that's so wonderful. So I make a motion that we app appoint her for um, as a volunteer. A minor student vol uh, volunteer poll worker. Great. I'll make. Uh, I'll second that motion for Jillian Warden. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. And this will be the term of office from September first, twenty twenty three, to August thirty first, twenty twenty four. Yep. All those, in... All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Um, we have a request from uh, John Pachorek, our chief. Um, for a new officer, uh, Mark Wilkins, um, to be appointed effective uh, Saturday, February 10th, 2024, um, in accordance with the union contract at $25.93 an hour. Um, this is to fill one vacancy. We have two vacancies. So um, this is great. Uh, we're hoping that he will yes yeah. so mark he's worked he's health. worked for um several years in, in the united states military as police officer which included overseas deployment tours officer wilkins has worked for our agency part-time over uh for over eight years is now fully certified accordance with the new standards of post which is a, a peace office standards and training commission so asset to our community and really excited I'm I'm excited. Did you too. make the motion? Did you make uh, the motion to appoint uh, Mark Wilkins as a full-time police officer, effective uh, February tenth, twenty twenty-four. Second. All those in favor? And Hilchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you very much. Yes. I know Fort John has had a lot of time, hard time finding qualified people, wonderful qualified people. So that's good. Great. Um, next item on the agenda. Uh, we already signed the. Did we already sign the Jillian Warden? I yes. can't remember. Oh, uh, there's one I left for you. Did you just sign it? I signed something. Yeah. Yep, that's that's that it. Yep, we're good there. Um, I just this is um a sewer abatement. Oh, we didn't nope. sign that. No. Uh, oh, don't for sign the... that one. We signed one already, which is in here. Did we? Yep. Didn't we? I thought, I thought we did. That was the yeah, first thing yeah. we did. Uh, I thought we did. Maybe we yeah, didn't. Maybe. Uh, okay. This is on our. Okay. We can ditch that. Okay. Okay. Yep. You know what? I think I'm gonna just attach it's it to the back so it doesn't get lost. Just in okay. case. If somebody there's a question about it. Um okay. Public records access. Public so there was a brief change to the public records access policy, okay. and that's to clarify a couple of email addresses. Okay. Okay. Could you right. um it's on actually it's on the first page. Okay. Do you, do you, do you want us to say it? Um, yeah, if you could just approve it because it's a policy and because okay. it has, it's a very important in terms of public records. Um, I just okay. wanted the board to vote. I'll it. make a motion to uh, approve the updated public records access policy. Um, and I will second that. All those in favor? Tim Hilchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. And um, I'll just put this in the, do you need this? Yeah. Any no, it's if you've approved it, I will create yep. the uh, final version. And have, have it posted and give it to perfect. Kathy. And okay. she looked at it. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. Um, next item on the agenda is town administrator report. And you don't have to do the whole thing. I won't do the whole thing. I'll you give don't. you the highlights. Um, just highlight. So the highlights are really, I wanted to thank everybody that 
work the planning team that worked on bringing that information session together. I mean, Tim and Chris and Cassie Jerome and John and Kevin, um, Frontier, Blackwood Audio, all the people that helped get that thing together did an amazing job. And thank you, FK. despite the weather, I think it went really well. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to thank Brenda for coming because I knew I knew we were going to have a finance question at one point that she could answer. So that was good. Um, I think it went well, really well, and you guys did an amazing job. Um, so that was the one of the first things was just you know recognizing how hard everybody worked on. Oh, wicked hard. Um, so the police HVAC system, you guys have gone through mm -hmm. the notice of award. So I will send that out, and I will also send out the contract once I hear back from them. Okay. Um, the St. James property, there was some back and forth between Lily and I about a question she had. Um, the as I had mentioned before, Lori Cuevas had asked that we push the sale back to April. So I put Fine. in April April fifteenth, and we'll see what she says. Um, and I had spoken to her at a function a private function the two of us attended without even realizing it <laughs> so the let's see that low we had an ada parking complaint in other words remember we talked about, about this we talked about so meeting. yeah we talked at the, about it at the last meeting thanks to kevin who's not here to hear me say this but thanks to kevin for getting that all fixed um a letter is going to go out to the architectural access board advising them and if they have any other questions they'll get back to me but that one's settled do you need help um, with the usda loan compliance stuff I actually it's all done i was oh, about to tell you, you that so right. usda loan compliance i had gotten i had an interruption when i was sending it out yeah and then i found a question so i reached out to uh nikki at usda and hadley and we eventually we talked it through she sent us our compliance letter the only thing that comes out of this that's work for us is we have to start collecting demographics okay. and I was going to try to get in touch with another town that's gone through a compliance review and see how they do that. Right. It may be worthwhile talking Orange to Orange probably do because they, yeah. they're about six months ahead of us. Right? They are. Yeah. Yep. So that was the plan was to check that out because that compliance requires documentation. Okay. And every time we go through a review process, we have to provide it now. Yep. So I think that's in a stable orbit. Okay. Um, I've been attending the rural affairs meetings with director Gobi and they're usually short, but they have some highlights and it's usually questions from, you know, town administrators and town managers that she's working with. So I outline those, what I have, because she'll do a, if I don't keep good enough notes, she sends out a synopsis. Um, so what I do is I usually add to whatever I think the synopsis is and whatever my notes are. So you'll see in my report that there's some outlines from that. So um, I wanted to just while I, before I forget tonight, I was hoping to get a, a contact or maybe if you want to send an invite to the head of the chair of Stam, Stam to um, join our... Um, Denise Demkowski. Great. You want so you want a contact for her? Yeah. Or, or you want, if, I know you mentioned it yesterday. I yeah, I know there's a lot, but I um we're in the midst of planning the um Western Mass Summit again, which will be April sixth at Hotel Northampton. So we thought it'd be great to in, invite her and um, any other members if you want to well, join up in those the It's not president. just to invite; it's actually to co-sponsor. Right. So you want to co you want Stam to co-sponsor? We want Stam to co-sponsor. So let me reach out to Denise first. See if she's interested. Denise and Brian first. Yeah, please. And uh, well, they, I, they they usually do co-sponsor it. Yeah. So if they're interested again this year, uh just they co-sponsor it's hitting year. all the rural stuff and yeah. um, it might I'm be sure really that, good to connect. I'm sure they'll both be interested. Yeah. Um, I great. just didn't, it wasn't, so I haven't, it hasn't gone through a program committee or a legislative affairs right. committee question. Yep. Like I haven't heard it on one of the committees. So yeah, I we, will check with We me. just started planning this week on it again. So we're a little behind the eight ball, but I think we got a good list together and we've we're got a date in the venue. And so we, yeah, yeah, I, I mean, think we're in good shape. We're fine. It's just, we have to get confirmation of speakers. Right. But we wanted to know, because Stan is, you know, Usually, if stamps issues, right? But the, from my point of view, it's really administrative. If Stam is involved, then Stam will get the select boards to participate, right? So that was where I was looking at it as a co-sponsor. Yep. That you would get 
the select boards off, off the dime and participate. Okay. Great. Yeah, because Denise is from Stowe, so she doesn't necessarily have a, right. <laughs> she she wasn't as close as Sean. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I will shoot her an email. I just wrote myself a note. Okay. Um, where was I? Sorry, didn't mean to interrupt. Um, there's a lot here. Were you in U USDA or were you you had moved on from that? Yeah, we moved on from USDA and just noticing that, you know, we're I'm trying to attend as many of those meetings with Ann Gobi as I can. Great. Yeah. Um, we're still waiting on the peer review from Weston and Sampson. Okay. Um, they had some catch up to do and one of the people that was on the team just retired. So they have somebody now filling in. I um, thought that they promised us this, this pretty soon. Tim and I had both checked in with them over a period of a few days. Um, they were hoping they were hoping to get it to us by the beginning of next week, if I remember correctly, but don't quote me. I'd have to go back and look. I did not put the date in. I thought um, it was in my update. I, I forgot to go back sweet. and look. Yeah, I there was some background email that went back and forth from Eric and me to them when they had questions. Okay. So they were finishing that up. Um and the person who took over is in the Connecticut office. Um, and he, he was amazingly sick when I got him on the phone. Mm -hmm. I mean, sad, I, I know as I bad or worse than Trevor did. And, <laughs> um, so, but I, I, I did emphasize that, you know, we need to get this, you know, this in hand soon. Yeah. Yep. So there's a lot of budget production, you know, all mm -hmm. that prep is going on now. Yep. Um, there's also, I need to let the board know that. It's not just budget pieces that happen. That's why I asked you to vote to open the warrant because not only do we have to start collecting warrant articles and stuff, but we also have to do start working on the town reports. And Pat and I discussed that yesterday. Yeah. Um, we need to have a little more lead time. So that report needs to be in at, at the very latest by the second week of March because we still, she chases so many people and we're all looking at each other <laughs> looking at carolyn <laughs> oh my god all right. you're gonna have to you're so gonna have to I'm give up a couple of meetings good, carolyn. i promised pat i would ask you guys about it <laughs> yeah um whatever we can do to help we will but it's it's part of the entire build up to town meeting yeah um, well, we and so just, we'll start we collecting can just take articles. your town administrator report should do it yeah it's 13 pages you guys oh, oh. do you realize uh, this year to capture this year is just i know just, this is this has been well like, one year we just wrote COVID. I know COVID. <laughs> I think the first word should be destruction, destruction, and more destruction. <laughs> Wait, rain. Uh, I, and hours, to the extent that you know we've all been working more than 40 hours a week. Here's two here's cents our an hour. <laughs> Make the two cents an hour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At least we still have our spirits. I, oh my God. Can't laugh. Okay. Oh, so there's some grant follow up that I'm working on too, and that includes both uh, community compact grants, shared streets and spaces grants. Uh, and then there's the one stop. I finally got an answer. This is a big deal. I got an answer from the lady at Community One Stop that we had talked to last year, and she set up a meeting. So Denise and I are going to go to that. Great. Um, if anybody else needs to be added, then I'm going to, I'll work on that with Siobhan. Um, so that's something I thought you guys needed to know. Um, we did have, there's a couple of complaints out there that are going to need to be addressed. One of them is a nuisance dog complaint. And Chris and I are going to work on that. Mm -hmm. um, one thing you should know is the Clayton Jones dangerous dog appeal was dismissed. Okay. So there is a next step that staff has to do. And I haven't put it into the radar screen yet, but we need to check in with uh, Clayton Jones to make sure she's complying with the order or that we know she's done the work to comply with the order. My my concern is um, if we, oh, we've we won the dangerous dog definition, how can you charge the same dog for a nuisance now? And, and does it, does it lower the dangerous dog? No, it's barking. It's, it's an annoyance. It's, it's a dog barking complaint. Right. What it but, is. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't change. They're two different things. The I know they are two different, different things, things, but I, I'm not. You know. Well, I, we're not going to end up having a dog hearing about this, right? I, mean, no. I think is... you have to. You have a complaint. 
The complaint was put forward last month. But you don't always have to have a hearing. Not every dog. One of the th so the issue is is you have a formal complaint. Mm -hmm. Um, you can hold a hearing. It depends on who shows up, and you know, I I have no idea. That's that's really what the hearing is about to decide a framework. Like, what's people's perception? Can, of you, them? can you just get the legal? What are we supposed to do on this? I already have. Oh, okay. You have to hold a hearing. We have to hold a hearing. Okay. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, one thing I would encourage is like, look, if the dog's barking, record it. You know, if you're bringing a complaint against this person, how are we going to know if the dog is barking just because you told us the dog's barking? So to your point, the, you're right. The level of proof needs to be, let's just have it, hear it, get it over with. Um, because we spent you know, six months worrying about legal appeals to a decision we made that was perfectly justifiable. So, um, you know, that's I, just my... I know, that's no, my... I, I hear you. I completely I hear just, you. It's I just, just don't want to waste any more legal fees on dogging. When you're done, when you're done, I have a comment about two things that are interrelated from your report that I want to just bring up. Okay. Um... So I've got a lot of upcoming priorities I've got to deal with and there are follow-ups. So just keep in mind that there's a lot of time that goes into some of this stuff, especially meetings and follow up with these grants yeah. and budgets and stuff. So I'll keep it short because Chris has one too. So what were you the two? So things two things. One is um, the, the 1821 building um, is moving forward. Uh, something that came out of it um, is that um, the, the kitchen area, which is not part of this project, apparently, um, is things have happened there because the ceiling tiles, et cetera, were, were yeah. gone. And now all of the, uh, the large equipment has been moved out. So it's a basically an empty space. And we have uh, an earmark for senior services dedicated to the building. And I'd like to begin exploring it's not dedicated to that it's not there. dedicated to the building it's dedicated to senior services for construction right so it's not dedicated to that building right so i'm i'm going to make the case that we are focusing on this building in sunderland that we may never own that sunderland may never buy mm -hmm. and we have a we have they decided not to buy it I don't know if they have, no. but it's still. We have a, two, a twenty. We have a June twenty twenty four. So there's construction work that could be done in this building, and the intent was always to use the fellowship hall as a senior services and senior center. So there's construction there, mm -hmm. and I make the case that we should explore that and move forward with it, even though, uh, and and it, and also uh, if if in fact we have to expend this money by a certain date. You know, we can't let a possible decision um, that may never occur delay us from using this money. So I, that's a just, bigger conversation. You do have to bring that bring, to the boo. Yeah, just bring You're it gonna to the You're going to have to bring it to the boo. Get, get it answered one way or the other. Right. I mean, yeah. I agree because we're going to lose it. And We are going to lose it if we don't use it. In I'm, time I'm not sure, better. and I, I would like some clarification about whether... There is such strict language in this one hundred thousand dollar grant, which when it was granted, mm -hmm. it was perceived that it was going to be used on this building. Whether the town can create, in addition to whatever the senior center does at some point, um, a space that would provide a local, even if it's a satellite facility for delivering senior services like mm -hmm. this the town nurse, um having a space to do, private visits, um, why that isn't a legitimate expense. Okay. And I just want to understand what it, what the money can be spent on. I can show you the paperwork, but that's actually the Office of Elder Affairs that has to make that determination because that's where the contract signed with. Right. right. So uh, base, basically what I'm saying, I guess, is we got s less than six months mm -hmm. and we have yeah. a lot of process that's going to have to take place if we're going to spend the money on this. <laughs> yeah. So bump it up the list of... Because if the senior center if stuff, that's the priority, then other things no, I'm just saying that if the, we don't want to lose a hundred thousand dollars because the boo and and people can't decide on stuff. We have to assume that the senior center thing, absent anything from Sunderland and the boo, is not going to happen. They're not going to buy a two million dollar building. They got to go to town meeting. They got to get approval. That it could be bought out from under them. 
Meanwhile, we have a deadline that's going to basically run cons parallel to what happens in Sunderland six months from now or five months from now. Perfect case. Let's let's bring it to them and say, here's where we're at. Let's move. Or are you going to lose it? Yeah, and also say, look, this can be a satellite thing for delivering specific it services. Can. Like, you know, everybody knows where the nurse is based. Yeah, it can. Yep. The nurse yeah. largely provides services to seniors. Right. Exactly. That's, that's basically that's what I think that maybe the general, general public, public doesn't, doesn't go over there. Yeah. 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 There's no reason to do the food foot clinic here. We can How long is the library plan to be there? A year. A year. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Great. And the space is looking great. And as soon as they do the I floor, it. it's going to look even better. Right. And because they, they've cleared out the kitchen space. And so is, is you, your thoughts, should we update the kitchen in there? with the Basically, money? what I'm thinking about is apparently everybody loves the cabinets, and I think they should be saved. I agree. They need new countertops. They yep. need a center island. Yep. So we need to get somebody on board to, Not I mean, I was going to go over to New England Meeting House just to have a conversation. Yeah. What would go into, right. you know, doing a, a, a basically a, a non-flammable yeah. Uh, you know, com commercial kitchen for yep. a senior services, senior facility, community center. Right. Uh, it's a great kitchen. I yeah. Mean, it's got nice space, nice cabinet. There's yeah, all there's kinds the of good equipment in there. To put in like the full operation. We still have to have yeah. the venting system. Yeah. We, yeah. We like, so you, you would need a hood. You would need a, yep. an induction, uh, an induction electric stove. Yep. You need a new um, commercial dishwasher that heats up the water enough. Correct. You'd need a new Bridge. refrigerator. Yeah. Um, and then you'd need to do probably new tile on the floor and yeah. the, the proper venting, as you right. say. And and I don't know if there would be a requirement for. Well, let's, let's talk yeah. that through with them. Yeah. For sure. Sounds good. Okay. All right. I'm done. Chris, right. you're up. Chris. I will keep it short and to the point. So, uh, I was just looking through my ATA report, just previewing it, and there's four items that haven't been talked about already. So those are the four I'm going to tell you about. The others have all been covered. Um, so the historic Deerfield tree box filter project, I've been working with MVP consultant Chris Curtis and Jeff Squire from Berkshire Design on preparing the materials that will be necessary to finalize their design elements for that tree box filter project that's going in front of the Deerfield Inn. Uh, the anticipated start date for construction is the spring, and that's when all of it will take place. It needs to be done by June, um, June 30th, 2024. Uh, Town Hall EV charging. So Eversource just installed the new pole uh, this past Monday, right outside of the building. Um, so that's one of the last steps that's going to be needed. Universal Electric is going to be coming back to make those final connections and then pretty much be ready to go. And I think if it's okay with the board, I think it would be beneficial to have a conversation on rate setting at the January 24th meeting, both for the new chargers and for the existing ones. Yes. And I'll make sure to get some figures from Brenda beforehand. Yeah. Uh, the Municipal Cybersecurity Awareness Grant Program. Uh, I haven't gotten a decision yet on that, but I got a notice that we can expect a decision soon yesterday. Um, apparently it's, it, it's pretty set in stone that whoever applies for it gets it so I'm, I'm not really expecting anything but a yes but just wanted to keep everybody updated on that and then finally uh the treehouse brewing company license amendment conditions uh the eap approval condition was submitted along with the rest of treehouse's application materials to the abcc thank you to pat um and we should be hearing back from them within the next few weeks have, have um treehouse and the uh, not yet, but that is something that should happen in the near future. Yeah. But they can take up. That's what I mean. I just want to make they have to prove that condition and then they'll move forward. They may be waiting just to see what the ABC sees. And yeah. it's funny, Chris, I'll bet you Treehouse hears about it before we do. <laughs> I think they usually notify us all at the same time. Just before we did. As fast as they can. Um, there was one item here, a collective highway bid participants that it wasn't on the agenda, but um, it's in the packet here to sign. It's a so yeah, I, that was in an email from Kevin that I got. He just needs somebody to sign it, um, so that he can send it back. Ooh, it's wait, under twenty. Yeah, uh, well, wait, we it's the collective just... bid for highway goods. Right. I, right. Yeah. I, it's it's under 25. I think the reason he wanted it is because it says select board underneath it. Um, 
they always do their yeah. contracts like yeah that. okay so if it doesn't need to be in there i can just skip it well we'll all yeah. sign it right it's, now it's, um this is basically normal... it gives them the authority it gives him the authority and the cooperative purchasing folks of the authority to, to endorse those or oh you are oh sounds good this is all okay. thank you chris Thank you, Chris, so much. I, w I really want you to know we're both we're, we're so thrilled that everybody's working so hard together.